right, we're back. So, uh, where are we at? Summit, one Vanderbilt. Uh, shout out Andrew Mathias. We got Gary V in the house. We literally just wrapped up AB, too. And now we're going back to back. Bob's still got uh, taco stains. I got the same pants on as always. But... As always. Gary, and, uh, is a, Gary is a guy who's always showed respect and been one of the most fascinating figures that I've ever fucking met. And always paid respect to the little guys. In the beginning, I remember I fucked with you and you fucked me when I had fucking nine followers. So I saw the talent. We also got, uh, we're bringing on John today, who's the, the president of Full Send, president of Happy Dad. Well, maybe he's the godfather, though. You he think he's be, the godfather? He may be the Because actually, me and John always go back and forth, Gary. We always have like a little fighting thing of who can bring better guests on. So me and John have this thing, and I think you're beating me right now. You have Tyson. Yeah, you're Tyson. Technically, I get who gets credit, credit for, for Gary? I get credit for Gary, even though you, you know. No, you get credit for Gary. I'll give okay, you Okay, thank I'll you. That. Thank you. you Bob yeah, could have got me. I, he could have. And I know he sent that text prematurely. We were going to. Have you come on board but in a Gary, couple weeks? Gary will probably, because out of sympathy, he'll just do it. But for you, it's more of a real business thing. You know, for me, he'll just- I've known John a long time. I know. I love that. Long time. But it's a- uh, I'm actually fascinated to see what you're doing in this whole fucking NFT space. I thought it'd whatnot. be cool. I, I'm so excited to sit down with you, Thank bros, because this whole everything going on right now, I think it's just so cool that we just have a fucking combo about- what's happening in this fucking digital world right now and everything going on. It's fucking, it's, I'm so interested. It's interesting because it's the first time it's been like this since 1996, 97, 98. Like Web 2, which uh, John for sure, Bob for sure, you in, in the newest version of it. Web 2 kind of hit in 05, 06, MySpace, Friendster, then MySpace, and then quickly MySpace, YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, and it all kind of popped off. But but everybody, but there wasn't like scary, like I don't even understand what's happening vibes. It was like, oh, this is kind of cool. Like, can I watch like Family Guy on this thing called YouTube? Weird. Web3 is like seed phrase, cold wallet, NFT. Why did somebody just pay $400,000 for a JPEG of a rhinoceros with like a flame up its at? Like, it's so confusing. And the last time it was this confusing was 1995, six, seven, when you had to tell 20, 30, 40 year olds, no, there's a thing called the internet. And like, what are you talking about? Like, no, no, you talk to people on AOL chat. Like, th- like people were confused. And you guys are young, so you're very young. Like, like it's been a long, t- it's been a good long time, 25 years since something came along, which is the blockchain. Now, obviously, it's been around, right? Bitcoin's been around, you know, Ethereum's been around, but now it's consumerized, meaning it's everyone's aware of it. Like. A lot of people have heard the term NFT. They don't know what it is. They think, a lot of people think it's it's a scam or this and that. But like everybody thought the internet was a fad. Like everybody listening right now on the other device that you're attached to, just Google the internet is a fad and read unlimited articles by the Wall Street Journal, by professors, by real legit people saying, no, no, this is gonna be gone in two years. And that's what you're hearing right now about NFTs. Like this is money laundering, this is a fad. And like, granted, I personally, and I put out this content every day, believe 98% of the projects right now are going to zero. I agree, yeah. Just like the internet stocks of 99, but the overall concept of NFTs and what it represents will affect every person listening and watching for the rest of our fucking lives. So for anybody that doesn't know, because I'm honestly in this boat, I'm an idiot with this shit. What the fuck is an NFT? And I'm dumb, sorry, my bad. What is an NFT? It stands for non-fungible token. I believe the word can change. We used to call social media Web 2.0. Like, it could change. So don't even get caught up on it, but that's the term. What does it actually mean? It means that you can absolutely show and verify that you own something digitally. You own it. That's a brain fuck for the crew here, for me when I first got it, and everyone listening, because we weren't used to it. But what was a brain fuck for everybody in 1999 was the idea of people dating online. Everybody thought that was weird. That was like a 500-pound dude in his mom's basement. Now everybody fucking does it. It's DM and swipe left, it's all that. So what's funny for me is watching a lot of 28 to 50 year olds really struggle and shit on this and they don't realize they became their mom. Like you used to make fun of your parents for not wanting to put a credit card into the computer. Now you are that by shitting on NFTs. What are these apes like? What are they? Because I so you before bought Before we go one, there, yeah, let me finish I one point. There's I think there's, yeah, yeah go, there's go, a, go. let me go to a one more 101 place. When people are like, well, I can just control, like right click and save, it's a JPEG. I don't know what they are. Meanwhile, meanwhile no. the amount of people that take photos in fake private planes, in fake watches, in fake Lambos, it's easier to fake 
in the real world than it is in the blockchain. If Bob took a right click and saved the board ape and, and put it on his profile, it's like, yo, here I am, I'm in the game. In eight seconds, I can go to the blockchain and see if he actually owns it. You can fake it more in the real world than you can on the blockchain. People don't understand it's like that. like wearing like yet. a fake chain or some shit. Like of course. Anyone can do that. You can but what he's saying is like, yeah. If there's a fake chain, you got to take it to a jeweler. He's got to bring out the magnifying glass, take a look at it. See Where if here, your watch you just is real. Up, you know. But let me say this. I'm incredibly empathetic to anybody who's listening who's like, this is fucking stupid. And I'm cool with that. I because that's why I wanted to do this too. It's cool. Because we have a lot of those people. And here's the best part. I could be 100% wrong. I'm just ready to talk to everybody who's listening and watching in 2037 and we'll see what's up. Like it's, yeah. And me with that statement, I'm willing to take my L. But I don't think I will. Where, yeah. where, where does it where does it like become like a scam though? Where does it become where the, it could I mean, be? Bob, a... there was a on OpenSea, which is one of the biggest marketplaces where it's you buy the and eBay sell. of NFTs right now. Yeah, it's the eBay of NFTs, and there was over over a billion dollars in transactions last month. You know, but what's crazy is there's less than two million wallets on there. There was a billion dollars in transactions in the last four and a half days on on right. OpenSea. There so, was a billion I mean, last month because people were tax harvesting, harvesting, so there was less action. As soon as we flipped the new year. The first six days of January, there's been a billion. With less than two million people on OpenSea. When I, when I first saw it, I, I kind of thought it was stupid too because, but then when I realized like what you said, like 98% of the projects are going to go to zero, that's when I really like started to understand. And like when you see those 2% of projects that actually are going to do something, that's when I really started to understand like the value of it. And so I think that's right, people... where it's like, okay, wait a minute. It, right. I, my instincts is for people watching. And by the way, I saw this in 2017 with CryptoKitties. I was like, this is insane. Owning, like, it would like broke my brain and I left it. Mm -hmm. I was like, nah, uh, like I just don't, I don't have time for this right now. This is too crazy, I don't understand. But when I really did a ton of homework on CryptoPunks in late 20, going into last year in 2021, what happened since 17 was I know that every kid that's 10 is willing to spend every dollar of their parents on a skin on Fortnite to flex digitally, not physically. I know why, this is a very cool room right now. If you look around, what people are wearing, what hat, what haircut they have, it's all just communication, right? And so everyone's just communicating through their clothes, through their, through their what they drink, what they buy. Like all we, do, the biggest form of communications that humans do is buy shit. Whether it's a home, a car, a meal, or clothes. It's the biggest form, more than your words, more than what you write, it is what you buy. And as this goes digital, it's the biggest market of them all. And once everybody understands that this is gonna eat up the world and what it actually means, or more importantly, when you say, why would somebody wanna own something digital? Well, why the fuck do you want a blue check mark on Instagram? Yeah. Validation. Why, why do you want a million followers on TikTok? That's digital. You want social currency. Mm -hmm. It's the human race. It's how we fucking live. But I'm still like really dumb at this. So, so I think Gary, what what makes really a good am. what well, makes Bob, a good you're, project? You're dumb a because one. you need to put ten hours of work on Google search and YouTube videos and actually put in the work instead of just reading the headlines. I know because I look at it like you. Like I'm really gonna speak like a fucking guy who really doesn't know anything because I don't. I shouldn't even be in this podcast right now because I don't know anything. But like for instance, John, what is this like ape thing you bought with the fucking eyeballs or whatever it is? Like what is that mm -hmm. even? How do you acquire well, that? Well, I mean, that's that's another NFT, right? Like, you know, and I think that's going back to one of the reasons why we have Gary here is, um, I'll get to that in a sec. Yeah. And I'll tell you why and what it is. But I think the biggest thing, Gary, is why Kyle and I really wanted to talk to you is we have a very loyal fan base. Yep. And we haven't launched oh, yeah. anything yet. You know, we haven't launched anything yet because we're very mindful of when we launched, you know, what do they get other than the flex? Correct. You know, what... You know, what more can we do? How, if someone goes and spends their hard-earned money, whatever it is, thousand bucks, 10,000 bucks, whatever it, it become, whatever it is, what do they really get other than the flex? I mean, Bob, back to, like, just to pick it up, like, back to what you were saying about, like, I don't get it. Like, my response is real. It's the homework. Like, you're going to have to put in the homework. Like, it's too new and complex, which is why everyone thinks it's a scam, which is why everybody thought the internet was a fad. This is like some pew. Like going the man to the moon things. The, here's, a, here's a little thing that's interesting. To John's point, there's a digital image. It could be known as a collectible. A, P, a Jackson Pollock sells for $100 million. 
50 years ago, 70 years ago, people thought that was just splashing paint in the Hamptons when the Hamptons wasn't the Hamptons out bumblefuck New York and worth nothing. So yes, there's the collectability. The big thing with NFTs is there's a contract attached to the image. The smart contract, verifiable, by no server, by third part, right? That's the punchline. What you put in that contract is what's interesting. So for example, with vFriends, I knew I was launching it super early. I knew that I wanted to finally build my WWF, because I'll always call it that instead of WWE, my Pokemon, my Disney, and that I wanted to spend the next 40 years building these characters. Empathy Elephant, Patient Panda, right? Flexing Fox, that I was gonna do this, that I wanted that creative IP. I was gonna build my Transformers. But because I knew it was so new, I decided to put in the contract that it's also a ticket to three years of VCon which is like a South by Southwest, Davos. It's, it's gonna be at US Bank Stadium in Minnesota, May 19th to 22nd. Ridiculous lineup of speakers, right? And so I knew that I could create some upfront value mm-hmm. that would let my audience be patient while I developed the IP and the NFTs developed so they understood what they were actually getting. So when you say, hey, we got a crazy audience, which everyone's aware of, what are they gonna get besides the flex? A, let's not, Let's not demoralize the flex. Yeah, Many agree. people, we don't, we don't razz on Kith or Palace or Fear of God that they're delivering you a hoodie for a buck 50 that delivers the flex. We actually think that's phenomenal, mm-hmm. and I do. It's how communities are built. So there's, like, that doesn't need to be demonized. Now, if, that, if whatever imagery you guys come up with also gives you access to this virtually, mm-hmm access to that physically. Your annual Super Bowl party, the only way you get in is with the token. Uh, A big thing in Toronto once a year as an homage to how it, like, one day eventually, what about 1% royalty? What about if an NFT represented 1% royalty of this? Mm -hmm. So, one question with that though. I feel like it's Bob, it's also, it's like a, is it Gary, like a modern day club membership in a way? It can be. You know, it can be very directly, like I said. Like, for example, full disclosure, I'm thinking about buying real real estate, even maybe an island, where holders can have access to. We've seen Soho House. We're in New York City. Zero Bond is phenomenal. Like, sure, it can be a physical membership. And then there's the subconscious human membership. Mm -hmm. These Nikes, that NYPD hat, that happy, like when you you walk in the airport and you see somebody have a hoodie or sneakers that you fuck with and you know that many people don't know, you immediately feel family. Mm -hmm. Or what we've always done, when I see somebody walking in New York City wearing a Jets hat, that person's my fucking family. Mm -hmm. Get that all the time. We've been tribal from the get. This is now a way for verified digital tribalness in perpetuity. But what's even more interesting for the issuers of the NFTs is there's a royalty contract similar to publishing music or books that creates economics that we have not seen before. When somebody resells a friend, I get a royalty. Those become profound economics, which is why The weekend has a $60 million home. If you hit in royalty land, there's real money. I'm more yeah, that's So every the, time someone yeah. buys and sells Gary's NFT, yeah, he's gonna make he like gets a, 10%. A but you have to understand why that's a big deal. When Fleer sold the Michael Jordan cards, they got like eight cents. When I sell one right now for $600,000, that doesn't go back to Fleer. In NFT land in the next 100 years, it will. Do you get all that 10% or do you put some into like a, a community wallet? I went with all my 10% because I'm taking those dollars like a business and reinvesting them in yeah. the, yeah, like I, the, I like, need to make- Like yeah. V-Conference. Yeah, yeah, correct. VCon is costing me a fucking fortune yeah. every year for three years. But I also need to launch a TV show, children's yeah. books, apparel line. I, like I need to buy slotting fees at Walmart for my stuff. Like I'm running, I'm trying to run a billion dollar company. So I need those royalties. Other people have shared the royalties. Other people have said the community owns it. Look at Board Ape, the most famous one. They don't own it. The community owns it. So now people are going to monetize their apes. They give all 10% to the community wallet? No, they have the commercial rights. Ah, The person that owns the board ape has the commercial rights. Board ape still gets a royalty. So back to the fundamentals. Say I'm a fucking guy who owns nothing, right? Yes. Because I'll be honest with you, I guarantee that 95% of the people watching right now have no idea. And you preached on what? How many hours? Uh, Listen, I'm a big 50 hours, which is intense. But I think the impact is so big yeah. that it's worth the conversation. Like I think every, first of all, knowing the kind of DNA 
of the person that watches this show, there's a lot of ambition but and adrenaline and fucking like alphaness. Yeah. And so like, I think it's worth your, I can tell you this, yeah. you're way better off spending 50 hours educating yourself on but the internet. You Let that. me finish this point. Go ahead. Bob, I apologize. Go ahead. You're way fucking better spending 50 hours doing your own homework on Twitter, YouTube, and Discord on NFTs than any fucking thing going on in college. Yeah. But what is step one though? So say so you have to put in those 50 Do hours. what I did in January. What is an NFT? Enter. Enter on Google. That's right. Okay. And and by the way, watch both, ver- like try to watch both versions. Go into something called twitter.com, you know it. Yep. And type in hashtag NFT and just fucking read shit. You got to start from the fucking dirt. Mm-hmm. And you just fucking read and listen, read and listen. I can't read for shit. So I watched a lot of YouTube videos and listen to podcasts. Mm-hmm. Bob, you're a great reader. Right. So, so, so you have, so you say you have $500 in your bank account. You want to get in the NFT space, you know, and you don't know what the fuck to do. You got to want to commit 50 hours of fucking work and however you're Did saying. Did you say you want to or you don't want to? Saying there's a kid who's watching this yeah, right now. Doesn't who's want emo- to or does? Who wants to. Good. That's good. Who's interested in yep. fucking doing this. He has nothing to his name. Yep. He has $500 in his bank account mm-hmm. and he wants to fucking get in the NFT space. He needs to commit 50 hours to this fucking world that you're saying of learning. And then what I would do if I'm that kid is once I've got 50 hours in the bag, I would ask a successful project to be a moderator in their Discord and let them pay me in ETH or Solana to do that. So break five, that down right a little now, more though. Yeah, so right now, NFTs are expensive. Way too expensive for 500 buck land. You, you know where I'm, my brain immediately goes to go garage sailing with that 500 bucks and turn it into 5,000 right. in six months and then go shopping. Right. But if we're playing just in this narrow place, spend the 50 hours, now you got your shit a little bit tighter and go find a top project in ETH or Solana or Magic, some of these chains, these are blockchains, and say to say to Alien Friends, F-R-E-N-S right now, which is doing well, yeah, you hit up the founder on Twitter or you tweet them or you tweet their account and say, hey, I wanna work as a moderator on your Discord for free be- and or to get paid because then you can start building your bag because $500 is very hard right. right now, unfortunately. It will come down. Right. But that's where we're at. So you're saying this is a space that kind of only the big players can play in. No, no, no. No, I'm not saying that. Yeah. I'm I, saying that there's a lot of people that spent $700 on a board ape that just sold it for $400,000 and that's fucking insane. Right. I'm also saying that's rare and far and few in between and I think people lack patience. Mm-hmm. Everything's now, now, now culture and why not have some patience and fucking get some dirt under your fingers for a year and instead of trying to invest 500 because you're going to make 4,000, which means 99% of the time you're going to lose, why don't you eat some shit for a year, build up your bag a little bit more and then maybe in nine or 12 months have 5,000 and a fuckload more education to go and do something smart. Everybody just wants shit right this fucking second. Right. Bob. Yeah, I know. What it's fascinates am- me is like kind of the opposite. It's not the smaller people, but what people like us and even you and anyone else can do that as a platform, what we can do in the NFT space. And that's something I've become fascinated with. And what I like like about what John said is what most people are about to do in 2022 in the NFT space is make a lot of short-term money and fuck up their reputation. Yeah. That's what we're most, that's what we would never do. Because I mean, the amount of offers we've got to even promote an NFT project or, I mean, I feel like what everyone's doing right now is like, choose an animal and like make it look like it's on Molly or some shit and then sell 10,000 of them That's right. and make $10 million, <laughs> which we could literally do tomorrow. <laughs> if we of course you could. Yeah. Right? The, but then literally I, do. I'm but, one of those guys. But that would be it and we'd I'm be done. I'm not going to lie, I'm one of those guys. But we'd let's, be let's done. See, but one of the things, and this is one of the reasons I really want to talk to Gary is like, not, I'm not just saying this because you're here, but I, I'm a holder of V friends, And I got V friends when I started... I wanted to be closer to you, right? I know I could text you anytime, but I wanted, like, I, I just know you do a lot to inspire and motivate people. And and I was like, you know what? I want to be one step closer. And then when you start talking about doing the conference and some of these other physical stuff, I was like, wait a minute, he's not going to have a conference and I can't go. And I'm not going to text you like, hey, sorry, I never got one, but can you let me in? I wanted to be further connected with you, with Gary. And I think that's what every project should be doing is so whether it's by the his guy. project we can maybe have access to his conference i want to go to his conference i think okay. it's going to be cool i think i don't want to sit back and sit, watch clips on youtube about it i want i want to be there you know it's really hard you know you know apple and, has and a Bob, conf- for context yeah. i'm sorry john yeah. uh the 50 over 50 percent of the v friends sold at two thousand dollars okay that's a three-year conference. So mm-hmm. that amortizes out to like less than seven hundred dollars for a four-day conference mm-hmm. right now the people that believed in me at the time, 
Now the cheapest feet friend is 40,000. So they have 20 extra money at least and they can decide what they're gonna do. But it was very important to me that that's why I kind of front loaded the value. Mm -hmm. My project's very unique. Most people are just like, here's the image. Call it a day. Let's be a community. I wanted to give the real life access that a smart contract can do. And I'm actually surprised that a lot more people haven't gone there, but I'm not surprised. What John knows, because we knew each other from early Vine and Web2 days is people come and go. Mm -hmm. People come and go because most people want the short bag. That's it. They want the seven million in two years, buy a house and chill. I want the process. I would. I want to go for it all. If you go for it all, you're leaving money on the table every day of your life. The thoughtfulness of what you're going to do to the audience matters. And on this one, it's on the blockchain forever. So if you guys do a project and you launch and you make 13 million on the launch, right? And then royalties, but then you abandon it. You just do something else. Mm -hmm. Your life changed. You do. So, you decide, which Try I don't think it, yeah. you'll do based on what I've watched. But if you did or anybody else, well, Somebody's gonna tweet or Instagram or TikTok, whatever the platform of the day in seven years and be like, man, that was fucked up what those people did. Look at this person that, the B baby transactions are lost. The person that paid fucking 100,000 for Princess Diana, lost. Beanie Babies couldn't do anything about that. There was no blockchain. They couldn't make it right for him who spent 100,000 on a Princess Diana beanie because there was no blockchain. But you can because it sits on the blockchain and you can do something about it. I don't think people realize what's happening here. The people that do a project, make a ton of money and then think they're just gonna run away and say, sorry, the market is the market, have a problem because with the blockchain, they can still bring value to the token holder. In 13 years, I can say, if you own a V friend, you are now my business partner in this new company. Mm -hmm. I could, and I don't think people have wrapped their head around that yet. Is that gonna be illegal? Because one thing that I was telling John that I think is so cool and that we could be so unique in the space is how, like you said, we can give a percentage of our ventures we need the government back to holders. Right. But we, is that gonna turn into like a security? security? Yeah, so we have to wait for a lot of things, just like we had to wait on the internet. Right? Again, a lot of kids in this room, there was insanity emotion in 2006 about YouTube. Pirating content, this and that, like, oh my God, SNL clips on YouTube, this is crazy. Like, people were like, remember the FBI thing in the VHS? Yeah. Like, it's one of the reasons why YouTube I remember sold. when I would copy WrestleMania, I was like, I know that somebody's gonna yeah. knock on my door and fucking arrest me. Like, you know, like, so there's still a lot to be figured right. out. Yeah. yeah. But adding, that... adding it to the community while it's safe, right? Like, let's but, say we said, yeah, Dad. I wanna give X percentage of our merch sales and put it into you, our community wallet some, and get some... let the community decide what we spend that on. You can I think a, that's so fucking cool. Course, like, it's insane. Whatever, yeah. DAOs, decentralized autonomous organizations, it's something everyone's gonna be hearing about a lot. Yes, comma, you're gonna love this. I would love for the VFriends holders of today to be my business partners in everything I do the rest of my life. Right? You today, all the time. today yeah. I think it's, so it's cool. unclear if I can do that. In six years, the laws could be clarified and they'll say you can. I, the next day, can come out and then that's what's cool about the blockchain. I can verify that you have it, you connect, you prove it, you sign the contract, and you're now in the thing. That's amazing, you can retroactive in perpetuity. That's a big fucking deal that we've never been able to do in life. So uh, your holders are gonna buy the jets with you? It's on my docket. You're still yeah. there, right? Yeah. Let's go. I know now, you wanna I'm, do that. I'm more convinced than ever that I've got a shot, but I just like, for me, it's the thrill of the hunt. Of course. The thought of like, can I strategize my way over the next 20 years to pull off this fucking insane You're a scary, goal? You're a sick long as I've known Gary for 11, 12 years, it's always been, I gotta buy the Jets. But, I gotta but, buy the but, New York. But, oh, wow. but, it's, but it's always been, I've gotta try to. Yeah. Right? Like yeah. when Johnny Thompson or Susan McGee buys them in 15 years and everybody shits on me like, fuck you, Gary, you didn't do it. I'm not gonna be devastated. To me, the real love is the try. Mm-hmm. Like, of course I'd love to. It'd be insane. If I pull it off, I even think there's movie in my, You're you know, after it. I'm gone. But if I don't, like, look, somebody did it better. They out, they outflanked me. I didn't pull it off. And I can eat that humility. I can. And so that's, that's your, that's, I mean, it was probably plenty, but what's the big Gary V end goal? The real end goal is to actually, to be very frank, recognize that I have the ability to have nuanced conversations at scale. Let me explain what I mean by that. You've already done that. Yeah, but like I, for example, business. I think people don't realize that business is like sports. For example, sports. Let's use somebody you love and I hate, Tom Brady, right? Jets, Tampa, a couple weeks ago. 
He's freaking out on the field, pissed. He's won seven trillion Super Bowls. It's a random game against the Jets. He's a competitive and like, dog, And Gary. like, he's not happy that they didn't push up the clock and he wants to like fight. And I watch that because I hate him so much. And I'm like, I so get that because that's, I, I have that in me. It's not about anything other than the fucking game. You're in it for the fucking game, right? But then the game's over. And what does he do? He goes out of his way to go up to Sack Wilson and says, you played a nice game. Like, you can clap it up. You can talk to your homies about, like, charity events and how's your wife and how's, your, right? In business, we don't realize that you can try to beat everybody. I want to be better than anything you ever do. Facts. Anything that you three ever do, I want everything that I do to be better. But it doesn't mean that your winning comes at my expense, nor does it not mean that I can't give you roses when you're fucking dominating. And in business world, people don't treat it that way. Like if somebody does a podcast format similar to this, it's all of a sudden like, fuck that. Like in business, everyone's like, thinks that it's that and I just don't see it. And so like some of the nuances, I wanna create a legacy around business that's slightly different. To me, that's more interesting. How many people show up to my funeral because I did it right? versus did I buy the fucking Jets? Nobody gives a fuck. You know how many rich fuckers or people that have done crazy things die and we're like, cool. And it's like, but if you fucking leave a positive impact, yeah. like that's fucking cool. How rich are you? Very. How much money you made in the space that we're talking about right now? Oh uh, yeah, didn't I see all those posts going around? I see ninety million. I see. Yeah, you know, by the way, don't be what? misled. My my Google net worth is eighty six million, and I will say this. <laughs> Let's just say it's far far off. So. You know what's crazy about that ninety million in ninety days thing? I literally in the video say it generated fifty million in primary sales. There's been forty one million in secondary, which I get ten percent of, which means it's fifty four million. Like right, and yeah. that's. But I also carry a multi million dollar payroll. ETH goes up and down, mm -hmm. like there's costs. Yeah. Like I'm running a, I didn't make it. The company of V Friends made the 54. You pay 27 in taxes. You have expenses. VCon's gonna cost me fucking five, seven, 10, like a year. Like people are just so fucking, everybody wants to read a headline and be like, and all my friends are like, Gary, 91. I'm like, are you a fucking idiot? <laughs> Like you have a business bone in your body. Do you understand how shit actually works? They're like, so now when I say very, mm -hmm. the average income in the US is 54,000, 55,000. The top 1% of earners in America make 450,000 a year and above. If, you're, if you make $450,000 a year in America, you are very, very, very wealthy. We don't even begin to think somebody's got anything going on if they don't make a million a year. And a million a year in all the craziness now feels like nothing. Right. Right? So I think we have the conversation super wrong. And then there's a whole nother convo. Do you know how many miserable fucks I know that make four million a year and hate their life and everything sucks shit? Many. And do you know how many people that make a buck 30 or 65 that I know that love life? Like we have a complete fucked up convo of what success looks like. Right. It's all, and it's all just, it's true. you know, you it's get, fucked. You know what it is, this too, because it's like, you know, on, on social media, all these people are portraying these different lives of jets and fucking yeah, but watches. The big, and but the all. bigger question is, like, why do you care if somebody else is on a private I jet? I don't, but I don't, but at the same time, there are people that are just, that's the way society's adapted to. I understand, but we need to, like, which is. is why we need to have important conversations around self esteem and FOMO and all this other shit. Like, if you fucking, if your happiness is predicated on if people think you're awesome or, or this and that, you're going to be in trouble. You're vulnerable to outside affirmation, which is the quickest way to get into a shit spot. So what is what is your vice? Where do you spend your money? Like in a sense of where you maybe shouldn't? Like for instance, Steve, their partner, gold mm -hmm. chains and all this shit, whatever. Where do you spend your money maybe where you shouldn't? Convenience. Yeah. Right? Like like anything that saves me time. Yeah. Right? Like I I don't want to do anything. Like like other than what I want to do. So anything that like I I have multiple assistants, driver, like all that's like so that's one place. Um, I, this is ridiculous. Something happened when I was 10 that really was a telltale for me. On my 10th birthday, my grandma took me to Toys R Us and they had Cabbage Patch Kids, were, which were impossible to get. So I took my birthday money and bought my sister a Cabbage Patch because she was with me. I, I don't like stuff. And I never, I don't like stuff. I like experiences. I will overspend on vacations like crazy. Mm -hmm. Like crazy food. Right? Like I'll, I'll be ridiculous with that kind of shit. Mm -hmm. But I don't like stuff, cars. Like, I'm not a stuff guy. I'm, I'm also, I'm saving. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm trying to do some shit out here. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm, I'm 46 years old. I'm young. Mm -hmm. This is another thing with your audience. Like, man, if I could just get these fuckers at 25 to understand they haven't even started. Yeah. Like, can you imagine now? 
with how you and your brother were on fire 11 years ago, if I told you in 11 or 12 years, you'd still be young as fuck and you haven't yeah. even started, you wouldn't have believed still me. younger than ever. Right? Yeah. Right? I just wish people slowed down, were patient. I was, I was, I was 28 years old sleeping in a car. That's right. Yeah. Like it's just you're like, still starting. I mean, 34. 34. I feel like you're Shut still starting. Shut the fuck up. How old right. are you? 27. Yeah, that yeah. makes me want to punch my fucking like <laughs> face. <laughs> no, like, that's the best. But he sees. But life then like I we feel old life. too sometimes. You know, yeah. like <laughs> yeah. I never feel old. I don't think people have it figured out. I think that people people are impatient because they want to look like they're successful to other people. Mm-hmm. When you're in your own fucking cocoon doing your own shit. By the way, you know what else that does? It keeps you grounded when people say you're the best. One of the great things about doing this, living in your own fucking cocoon, is it's not just about hearing the hate and being okay with it. There's a sneakier one. It's not believing the hype. All those little goat emojis and you're the best and all the hearts and you're fucking, when you don't hear that either, Mm -hmm. when you appreciate it, but you don't believe it, well, it keeps you fucking grounded and not being a dick face. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. It was crazy because we talked about how in the early, like literally in the early days with you, like when I literally had like nine people following me, nine, like literally nobody. Gary was a guy who was like in my DMs right away, whatever you want to say it was, really? blah, blah. Are you engaging with people that are hitting up every day? Are yeah. you like, so what makes you respond to a DM? That two things. One. I need to stay in the dirt to know what the fuck is going on. And the second I go into the clouds and the penthouse, I'm finished. So selfish. I need to know what the fuck is going on, the pulse at every second. Yeah. But I'm saying if a kid DM, like if a random, like say there's a thousand people that DM you based on watching this podcast, right? Out of the full set audience. What's going to make them Oh, completely, completely completely random. Completely. You look at your phone at the right time. Yeah. Completely random. But what motivates you to get, to really get a response? Two things. Either A, in the dirt to know the pulse of culture, mm-hmm. whether it's emerging gamer, hip hop artist, like anything, anything, anything. So they have to offer value to you? Nope, nope, that's, you're, I'm telling world. you why I'm in there. Okay. That's one. You Number check like their engagement, that's something I do. I mean, if I get a DM and I'm looking and then I check someone's profile, I'm like, oh. This, I, I kind of watch what they're doing and I, yeah. you know, I'm you mixed. learn. But I'm literally, Gary, he what's this person the doing and stage. Like, I, I, I hit Gary up when I had this. And like he but, uh, was just. Like I think responsive. Gary, because I'm, I'm very similar too. Is uh, I think it looks at what's interesting too, right? Someone could DM me and have 37 followers, and this actually happened. Re- low amount of followers, but started saying, "Hey, John, I know you're into collectibles. Have you looked into VHS tapes yet?" I was like, "What?" Like, and I started looking at it. Then I went down this rabbit hole. Started get, <laughs> seeing Gary was talking about it, and then I got obsessed with VHS tape collectibles, which yeah, is a I thing, by the way. I, I know your mind's like this right but now. Cool. Like, it, but I went and bought Pulp Fiction. Yeah. Top Gun, Karate Kid, all sealed. I send them in to get graded. It was worth a lot. It's crazy a lot. How about you, the Disney movies? Less. Not. If you go on eBay. But but now they grade everything, right? Just like cards, toys, and now VHS. Video games are fucking huge. Grading them in what kind of condition. Uh, I want to get back to VHS because it's wild. I want to finish your the, one other part. Because I know I'm at the part of my career right now that if I take 13 seconds, it might mean something. Exactly. It's fucking incredible. Which is amazing. I don't which even know how to... A, which is almost I'm a feel-good thing, right? Which is almost... Like, a, it's insane. Which like, is almost a feel-good thing, too. It's a fucking real thing, bro. Like, how the fuck? Like, literally some kid... And some of the shit... You guys all get it. Some of the shit is heart-wrenching. Yeah. My dad punched me in the fucking face tonight. Like, like how are you not compelled to be like, yo... Like, and, and some of the shit, you don't even know, like, if you're... If you can, uh, yeah. right? Some of the stuff melts me because I'm like, I don't know if I'm capable. This is above my skis, right? But the main reason is 80%. I'll give you the numbers. I know what's in my soul. 80% because if I know I reply to some kid on a high school wrestling team, I'm like, yo, keep going, that he's going to lose his mind, go into school and be like, yeah. And, and that's like nice. I wish I wish I had this when I was a kid and I could have done that and Macho Man Randy Savage could have been like, oh yeah, and I would have lost my fucking shit. Right. because I want to know what's going on and I never, you know, it's like kind of like hip hop, right? There's certain rappers that get enormous and then the streets don't fuck with them because they don't fuck with the streets. I feel like that's one of Drake's key to successes, right? Correct. All he does is just collab with the hottest rappers and puts them on. Because he's humble and hungry. He's in his shit. Other people... Win, like he's blown up they, so many rappers. Of course, Lil Baby, Twenty One Savage. Of They're obviously yeah. popping before, but no, Drake no, gives them do, that first no, no, feature. He's doing, he's he's doing it right. Too, right. It's you watch guys like him and he's others. A, he's a genius. He, he understands. Does that too. Well, once right? you're at the like, top of the Steve fucking pyramid, yeah. 
right? Do I, like, I kind of like learned that from Drake, right? honestly, man. Like yeah. watching what he did and just applying it to like a different. If some YouTuber reach lane. out to you is like, I have nine million subs and twenty million on IG, but like, mm, okay, whatever. But someone. That's well, when you see someone 100K, small and talented too, it's like. It's the best. That's feeling. the best thing. It's very hard to find though, but when you, you do find it, it's early fucking and, you know. dope. Mm-hmm. But but it all depends on what gobbling up early. LA life is like I'm gonna sign this person, make twenty percent of their bag. For right. me, it's when you say what you just said on this podcast, that means the world to me. A thousand percent. When I know my history with him, I know my history with you. That's what you were saying about me behind my back, not in front of everybody. What people are saying about you behind the back that actually know you. That's what matters. When some kid's like, Gary Vee, you're a fuck face. If we've never interacted, I'm like, I understand why you might think that. I might be too much. I might have shit on the Patriots and you like the Patriots. You might think NFTs are scams. Like, I have empathy to why you think that. If you and John said that I'm a piece of shit, I'm dead. I'm like, you guys know me. Right. If you did, I can't, you know, that would hurt because I think I've watched you from afar. I'm like, fuck, why does he think that? But... But it wouldn't kill me. I'm like, we don't know each you don't other. Know him, yeah. You guys know the shit that nobody knows. Every single interaction of every single thing. And I'm always putting karma points on the board. I'm not looking to wrap somebody up. You know this. You were in that moment at that time. I was like, I'll help. But like, yeah. I, I'm, here's why. I'm fucking good enough to get mine. I don't need a piece of anybody else. 100%. You got me through a lot of shit, by the way. So you're a good dude with that. That's You've the same with us, too. It's, it's like, shit. it's kind of different for us because we like. Real shit. This guy's real fucked shit. up. We'll get to that. Real shit. I want to hear. Real shit. We're not going to get to that. Yes, we real I've been shit. asking for a Bob Menery episode. No, no. no I want to know what kind of shit Bob got into. Like no, Gary no, had to help we're out. We're all good. I always just, but at the end of the day, there's certain people that I do reach out to, and I consider them mentors, and I consider them good friends, that if shit is going on, Gary's one of them 100%, who, like I said, when there was nothing on the line early on, he was a dear friend of mine, and so respect that. Gary, do you uh, do you realize how good powerful trans- that was like a, a voice you've got? I do. How'd you become such a good, like, speaker? When did you realize that you were, like, such a good speaker? The first speech I ever gave, I was so fucking like, some dude emailed me, he's like, would you like to speak at a marketing conference in Florida? I was doing the wine shit, I don't know if you know my background, 2006. I'm like, that's kind of cool. I'm like, yeah, I am, like, I knew I was a marketer. I thought it was really cool, because I knew that eventually I would get to that part, but I was in the wine game at this point. So that's cool, felt right, right? I never thought of it, I didn't even really know the game. Then he writes, and he goes, can we get on the phone and talk about your fee? And I was like, oh, shit. I'm going to get paid? I was, like, pumped. So I get on the phone, and he goes, we'll pay you $5,000. I lost my mind. I was like, this is an enormous, to talk? So I went. I'm sitting in the back room. People are talking. I'm like, they're not, that. like, I'm kind of getting this sense of, like, I'm not sure that person's very good. Like, I had no idea what I was doing, no presentation. I got D's and F's in school for a reason. I literally didn't even know what the fuck I was gonna talk about. I was like, I'm just gonna go talk about what I know. At that point, Twitter was just about happening, so I'm like, I'm gonna talk about Twitter. I went, and bro, fucking, it felt like I was home. From day one, first speech, fucking tore the place down. Everybody rushed the stage. I stayed for like four hours talking to everybody. I thought it was the greatest thing ever. And immediately I'm like, oh shit, this is something I'm good at that I had no idea. And I was 34 years old, which again, to tie it into this audience, for all the 22 year olds, 19 year olds, I was 34 when I found something randomly that I was really good at that I would never thought of prior to a cold email. So it was 34 and I loved it. And when I look back at my style, back to Macho Man or all the stand up comedy I watch, I realized, oh, I, my style was affected by what I thought it was cool, but I was talking business shit. Are you ever worried about, are you ever worried, because you're obsessed, obviously, with just, like you just said, the public speaking thing and all that. You do a shit ton of shit. It's like a, it's like a Hollywood actor who does too many movies, right? You do everything. You yeah. do every podcast. You do every show. That's what I noticed about you, right? And the one thing about, oh, Gary, Gary does everything. Why is it that you do everything? You're not, per, like, you're not, you're not, you know, specific on picking certain things that make sense. Well, they make sense to me. You just do, but you do everything. You do every podcast show. You do every, yeah. Like, yeah, but like, at this point in my career, 80% of the people that I'm on, I know. Yeah. 20%, if the other 20% I'm on for the same reason I replied to a kid, I'm like, I like this kid. I like her. And if I go on her show, she's going to leverage my name to get bigger guests. I'm willing to allocate 30 minutes of my time that's very valuable to put them on mm-hmm. so they can leverage my name to get bigger because I, I think they got lot. some. What's I that? See a lot, I, see, I see a lot of podcasts, so like 10K subscribers, and Gary just jumps on. That's what, cool. but I'm, and I'm like, that's you must be a love friend. And then Gary, Gary be like, hey, nice to meet you no, for the first time. Fucking, like, People love fuck about with Gary that. Is he's willing to do yeah, that. I love that. 
But now that. back to the question is what the fuck is that I've asked you before? When do you go to bed and when do you wake up? I go I go to bed at like midnight and I wake up at like seven. So midnight seven. Is I'm a consistent? big seven. You know, this was the crazy, like everyone's like, I love, I'm passionate about my career, but like I fuck with sleep. You have to have it. I yeah. think so. I'm just focused on being effective when I'm awake. Right. Like some people are like, I only sleep four hours. I'm like, but you sucked yeah. the 20 hours you were awake. Yeah, you were tired halfway <laughs> through the day. <laughs> like you watched YouTube videos for four of those hours. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so I'm more like, like do my thing, right? Yeah. So what, what, what is the smartest move you think you ever made in your career? Uh, deciding that I would work for my dad's store, even though I thought I was a beast at 18, even though I was making thousands of dollars on my sports card business pre-internet, that my parents took me from the Soviet Union, my mom is the greatest mother of all time and gave me all my self-esteem and kindness. My dad worked his fucking balls off 15 hours a day because he had a hundred fucking dollars and that I'm gonna go into this family business and I'm gonna take this fucking thing to the moon because I'm the best and I'm gonna eat shit for a decade, work every fucking minute, own nothing of this business, get fucked and not get paid anything because that's what immigrant families do and I'm gonna give back to the two people that I love the most in the world and then I'll go get mine. And there's not a thing close. Are you still die hard on the uh, sports uh, trading card business? I am. I obviously have been completely tsunamied by the fact that this NFT thing happened, but I've quietly been like strategic. I've been buying up LeBron Chrome refractors. Yeah. Still. Because uh -huh. wow. Ruben, Ruben just acquired Tops, right? He did. For whatever it was. That was a crazy He move. did. Bob, can, can we stick on the thing I did with my family biz? I'd love to. I want, again, back to John, something else you just touched on. Like, do I realize my voice? Yeah. There's a lot of kids watching right now. Where everyone's being told, you gotta go win. Da, da, da. A lot of those kids really love their parents. And some of those kids' parents own family businesses. And a lot of kids that are listening right now know what I know, which is if you go in, into a family business, you don't own that shit and you're gonna get underpaid. I took a business from 3.8 million to 65 million and made fucking 70 and 80,000 a year working seven days a week, 50, like got fucked. But I didn't get fucked, back to your question. Mm -hmm. It's my legacy now, forever. When my parents pass, when I, my deathbed, I can say, man, I did a really good fucking thing, right? It's okay to go from 22 to 25 for three years and help your mom's business. Like, you have time. At 34 years old, when I started VaynerMedia, and now it's Vayner X, and at the revenue we're at, it's a billion dollar company if I was to sell it today, right? We're 250 million, 235, 240, I gotta see what the final numbers, it's a big ass fucking company. That's what I actually do. When everyone's like, what does Gary Vee actually do? Is he, what the fuck's he doing? I'm like, do you not know that I run a 1,500 person well, global? Well, they your office. Like, yeah, like, you see, 1,500 people. T Grizzly back in the day, baby. I'm like, I have a real yeah. company. Multiple like, floors. Gary Vee is my side hustle. Yeah. Gary Vaynerchuk runs an actual business but when I started Vayner, when I was 34 years old, because I was building my dad's business and because in family business you don't get paid, I had no fucking money. I started Vayner Media in Buddy Media's conference room because I didn't want to have any rent fee at 34. I desperately need people to understand if you're sitting and watching right now and you're 28 and you don't have shit and you can get shit. Like it's okay, just because you're 31 but your buddy's making a million on NFTs or or your best friend's girl's making four million on TikTok, you don't have to feel like a piece of shit. We're in the first quarter. Jets were beating the Tampa 24-14, late fourth quarter, they lost. Right. Just because you're not winning at 23 or 27 or 32, you're not finished. And by the way, what's winning? Well, when, is, when is it time to panic? 70? <laughs> When is it time to start? 70. <laughs> 70. So, yeah. 70. Because fucking Colonel Sanders came out with some KFC shit late. So Great thinking, Goose, you know that thing you flex? 70 years old, it's time to panic at 70. Yes. If you're watching right now and you're 70 and, and you're... you suck shit, maybe panic. Pack it in. But if you're... <laughs> Pack it in. But on some real shit, because you guys know your audience, there's some people watching right now that are 25 yeah. and they like feel like sad because they're not a millionaire. That's fucking asinine. I think it's simple as if you're, still, if you're still breathing, you, you got a shot. Well, that goes back to down. the last point of like, but what's success? Right. right. Like this whole, like so many people really believe that money is the unlock and they were really, really wrong. They're wrong. Mm -hmm. They just are. 
So how have you and Michael Rubin? Have you guys? Because yeah, I always see Rubin's always attached to your name. How have you, and Michael, been partners in different ventures? So I'm on the board of Candy Digital, the okay. NFT company. Yeah. Um, and it's been great. I mean, Rubin. I mean, he's a fucking. He's a guy. The best. He's a guy. He's an ex. You know what I like about him is he's an actual operator. This goes back to kind of the theme of this show, like. If you can't operate, the reason 98% of of NFTs don't have to fail, the reason 98% of NFTs are gonna fail is 98% of the founders of these NFT projects can't operate. Mm. How so? Well, let's see. What you guys have done here with this lovely thing, this you need to know how to operate. You need to know how to have a conversation with a wholesaler. A lot of people know how to create demand. But to actually turn that into a business, that takes an operational skill set. Ruben's a fucking operator. Like, Fanatics is a real company. Mm-hmm. It's not like ha ha ha. And like, obviously, I'm proud of my operational skills and that's why we have a lot of optimism on what Candy's gonna be. And Candy's like Dapper Labs. You know, they've got the NBA highlights. Candy's got baseball, NFT rights. Yeah, can you talk about Candy a little bit more? Because I don't, I don't yeah. even think I've talked to Kyle about I Candy. Even, I know. Yeah, I know. so Candy's a platform, Candy Digital. And w- much like Dapper Labs that has NBA Top Shot, which I'm heard of, Candy won the rights to baseball's digital NFT rights and will continue to go and gobble up sports rights to sell sports official NFTs. So if you want next year's Mike Trout or Wander Franco or Vlad Guerrero, real NFT, that's gonna come from Candy. Just like the real baseball card comes from Tops. Oh, by the way, Ruben and Fanatics just have bought like, Tops. Have like leagues and teams really capitalized on like the utility of NFTs yet, or not? Not really? fully. They've all... just sold like NBA moments yet. Correct. Right? You're gonna get to the place where one of the NFTs represents a three-minute FaceTime with your favorite basketball player. That'd be cool. Yeah. Let me buy this NFT and I'll be on with. Or like you know... the exclusive club in the, yeah. the Staples right. Center where you need the NFT. Everything that was a wristband, as an NFT, and yeah. a stamp, right. and a ticket will be an NFT in a decade. We, went, we yeah. went to a basketball game the other week, Kyle and I, and we're like, courtside soon is going to be holders one day. 100%. Holders only. Yeah. You, you know can why? only buy them you know if you're why? a holder. Because you'll be able to lease that NFT. You'll be able to resell it. The NFT is a collectible. A Jordan, a ticket for Jordan's first game, the stub, Michael Jordan, sold for $260,000 recent, like two weeks ago. That's gonna eventually be an NFT, and by the way, the Bulls in the NBA would have made money on it, this time they didn't, because that's how the collectible works now. But on the blockchain and royalties, like it's a, the world's about to change. Listen, if you're watching right now, I have so much understanding to why you're like, fuck this, money, you know, I see every post, right? We all, we're very social out, the four of us. So anytime hype beast, you guys, anybody posts anything, Bob, everything is like money laundering, scam. That's the same shit that idiot. they- I get called idiot all the time. When I bought that Ford 8, everyone's like, you're an idiot. I just right clicked and saved it. Now I have your thing and I didn't spend what I spent. But what's so what funny is they don't, because they don't yeah. even understand the technology. Yeah. They don't understand that a blockchain exists. Yeah. Just like people, Everybody told me when I launched winelibrary.com in 1996 that nobody would ever buy wine on the internet, ever. As a matter of fact, most of the smartest people that were millionaires that talked to me to teach me something told me nobody would buy anything on the internet. Forget about wine. This is so stupid, Gary. You're gonna fuck your dad up. I've known your dad for 20 years. This is people coming to me in 1995. I've known your dad for 20 years. He came to this country with nothing. You're about to ruin him and put him out of business with this silly computer thing. Nobody's... People are not gonna buy wine on the internet. You have to come to the store and touch it. Most of the people that are saying scam, money laundering, they weren't around in 1995 as a grown up to watch this conversation so they don't have the pattern recognition to know when something comes along that changes the entire world. Mm -hmm. Most people react to fuck that. And the ones that don't, make the bag, make the legacy, enjoy the process. And that's what's going to happen. How do you how do you think this space could crumble if it ever did? Well, it's definitely it, it, in the macro it won't crumble because I'm completely convinced that the blockchain is now here to stay. But again, internet stocks in 2000 all went to zero except a couple. Like literally, Bob. Again, you're a youngster now. Shut the in, fuck up, brother. In March of 2000, <laughs> all these internet companies were worth billions. You might have heard of Pets.com is the famous thing that is referenced. You're real young, so yeah. I'm yeah. going to break it down for you. 95, well, I, the internet I'm starts coming. Only, we only got nine years, by the way. I get so. it. 90, 95, the internet's starting to come. By 99 and 2000, all these companies are public, but they're making no money, but they're worth billions. Making no money. All of a sudden, kind of like how markets work, the market decided, wait a minute, this is bullshit, and the whole thing crumbles in March of 2000. 
Amazon goes from whatever it was to like a couple dollars. If you'd bought Amazon in March and April of 2000, I actually asked my team today in a meeting, I'm like, can you tell me what would happen if you bought a Amazon for $1,000 worth of Amazon in April of 2000 at its lowest point? What would it be worth today? The number's staggering. That's gonna happen with, with this. Do I believe that VFriends or Bored Ape or Punks or the best stuff, ex-copy people could go to 10 cents of the dollar that's now down 90%? The answer is yes. Do I personally, secretly, can't wait for that moment so I can take my USD, buy my Ethereum, and buy up the shit that I decide did a good job in the first 100 days of the carnage? Operationally, it's the fucking moment of my career. I can't wait. So you think even the big projects are gonna tank? Yes, because when the entire market tanks, everything tanks. So something's gonna happen because there's too much greed right now. To your point, like every influencer, like these, I don't understand what these influencers are doing. I don't understand, first of all, they're not disclosing. <laughs> like I'll give you a thousand to pump my fucking stork. With, like, okay, like I, I don't understand. Like people are so fucking obsessed with short-term money yeah. that they do such dumb shit. Mm -hmm. But you think that'll make the, even the big projects crash? I do. That is my prediction. You, because when, a, in, here's why. I'll tell you why, what I learned. Because everybody thinks, because a lot of people are so confused by the whole thing, the whole thing will go, mm. right? Like yep. it's the internet stock thing. What's better, them. right? Like let's just say someone that's in our world right. is getting paid 200 grand to post something. They don't know that they were that, that much different than us where you and I are spending, Kyle and I probably spend, no exaggeration, 12 hours a day, every day, talking about how are we gonna do this and how are we gonna do this As right. Should. And they don't know that, right? And they don't know that we get, someone's got paid 100 grand, 200 grand to post some bunny thing. You know, they don't know we're getting offered or Steve's getting offered. Some, you know, Steve will do it. We're yeah. sitting at a UFC game. Some guy sitting next to him so I told him, I'll give you a million dollars, promote this NFT it's thing. fucking crazy. And he called me, he's like, this idiot did this. You know, I'm saying no, Johnny, but let's do this. Let's do this right. <laughs> you know, like. He's like, this is no, but what the fuck? Yeah, it but, is but, tough so to turn down. But it's, it's, it's tough, a million dollars. So listen, what's, what's listen, the investigative process then for an influencer right now that's getting these offers to do a brand deal, right? What is it, Mace? So say somebody, somebody offers me fucking ten thousand dollars, Bob. I want you to post something for ten thousand dollars. What's the investigative process that I have to do you to make sure Bob's going to hit up all the NFT yeah, people? Yeah, but but Bob, listen, guys, for gotta, anybody looking, Bob, I'm in, I'm ready Bob, the first I'm things shot. first, I'm though, take this fucking thing right now. I'll take the quick bag. I'm Bob, in. the first things first is you got to understand the space first, right? You got to understand it's day one. The last thing that anyone wants to do is be blacklisted or canceled from the crypto NFT space when it's day one. Pe people know how to become rich. People don't know how to get wealthy. Rich is you take the 10,000 for the quick bad. Wealthy is you never compromise your name in perpetuity so that you can win in the end. That's it. That is the market right now. And 2% know that game. So how do you not, know when it's a good promotional deal then? How do you know for an influencer that's coming up to you right now if you want to pump an NFT, right? So because guess what? There's a lot of fucking influencers right now that are out there. They're like, hey, you know what? I don't think I'm, people really care, man. No, but they're taking the deals. Back to his yeah. point. When you say who, who I mean, I'm care. saying the majority of people don't care. Like yeah, from the people right. I follow, the only people that I really like that I'm friends with that I think has an understanding is like banks or something. Yeah. But everyone else that promotes it just they don't understand but it's it. Like so anything just else, like, right? Like we they don't of, see the future. Yeah. So they're like, why would I turn down? You know 100K? what combo we're having right now that I want everybody to hear because I think ten people watching and listening will take this little nugget and run with it for the rest of their lives, and we'll see the four of us in the places because they're going to hear it, and we'll talk about it. What I don't think the world knows is when you do dumb shit, like take 100K to promote something that you have no idea, you may trick the 98% of the world and get your 100K. But every time you do that, you're losing equity with the 2% of the people in the world that actually fucking matter. But it's still gonna happen, Gary. It's still of gonna course happen. It's it's still, they're it's still gonna now. do it, it's happening right now. I don't think you so, understand what I'm saying though to that point. To that influencer that I'm trying to talk to, cool, you made four million this year, but you're gonna make seven million in your entire life because you're gonna continue to degrade your brand and your reputation. Mm -hmm. And if you didn't, you would get to 72 million. It just would have taken longer. But I'm in, I'm, I'm again, I'm going back to this. I'm gonna keep bringing it up. I'm in the 95% probably of influencers that don't understand the NFT space. So do the and homework, when I get Bob. a brand deal, but I'm saying if I get a brand deal, it's like- Bob, the answer is do the fucking homework. I think homework. you gotta do homework and try to get ownership my, in, a, my answer, in, a, my in a successful project, AKA ours. I'm in, Bob, let's Bob, go. Bob, Bob, the answer to your question, because this is so exciting is, the answer to my question is, do you want to promote some medicine that you have no idea what it is? I'm asking you, you, Bob. Do I want to promote- Medicine. Are you going to give me, am I an influencer that You're has- You're getting 100 No, no, Bob, I'm talking to you. I'm going to give you $100,000 to promote this pill that makes you thinner. Sure, why not, if I say yes. <laughs>
Yeah, Bob's I mean, a bad guy though. No, no, yeah. but listen, that, here's what I'm saying. That's fine because this is America and Bob should do what he's going to do. I'm going to say to Bob as a friend when he calls me twice a year when he needs me, Bob, the reason you're in such a shit spot. Times a year, sometimes on FaceTime, you're just fair enough, family. Fair enough. You know? I'm just trying to help you there. <laughs> Bob, the reason you're losing is you took the $100,000 for the thing you didn't fucking know. All right, well, how do you know? What if it's a good deal? Like, how do you What's know? a good deal? Anytime you promote some shit that you have no fucking idea what it is, that's a bad deal. Okay, so wow. how do they do the investigative process to figure out if it's a good deal or not? First, you have to... I can tell you every... T- I have well, you put got in- Gary, you got John. I know, but I'm not talking Kyle. about Gary and John sitting in a room well, like us. Well, I'm well, how one of us person. Three. I think one of us... No, you're not. You're not talking to the average... You're not talking to the average You're not talking to the average person. I'm talking about no, no, if you're... No, no, you are not an average person if somebody offered you $100,000 right, to promote... so I'm fucking johnnyfuckingbones.com and I've got 90,000 followers on fucking Instagram. Yep. Right? And I get a promotional deal and say, hey, we want to give you fucking 2,000, pump our NFT thing. I got $1,000 in my fucking bank account. I need the $2,000, right? You're saying take it. I did. Okay. Just like I believe somebody that's hungry and has nothing should steal food from a fruit stand. Okay, but that's I also it. going back to your point saying that it's killing what? the market. No, nope, no. Nope. The market's, the listen, no. the macro greed is going to take down the market. I'm not worried about the person that has a thousand. First of all, if you have $1,000 in your bank account, but you're getting offered $2,000 to promote something, you fucked up. Right. So like that scenario doesn't exist, Bob. Okay. Like, like, right? Unless well, you nice. made 200000 and you just buy dumb shit 24-7. Right. Okay. I'm just, you know, I'm asking, I'm just... I'm, no, listen, I actually, what you're doing is amazing. You're helping people right now. I know I, what you're doing. That's what I'm trying to do. I know I'm what trying, you're doing. I'm trying to think of... What like, I'm trying to bring... I'm trying to think my, outside the box instead of having a podcast with everybody that has everything and has everything. What I'm trying to do is relate to the average person that's watching. I know exactly that what you're doing. may not have... But I think the problem that's... And what I'm trying to do with my passion... Equal because I know what you're doing and I'm trying to do the same thing. Yeah, is suffocate compromise. Mm-hmm. Like I'm, I don't know what to tell you. Like doing the wrong thing is the wrong thing. Right. Mm-hmm. Like taking ten thousand dollars to promote something you spent zero minutes investigating. To t- that because you know people, it's the reverse of what I'm doing or you guys are doing when you reply to people. You take twenty thousand dollars to promote a fucking NFT project that you know nothing about. Right. Because you know other people that are watching you are gonna spend eight hundred dollars to buy it. So you're gonna take twenty thousand so that all your audience loses its eight hundred, that's not gonna work out. Okay. Well it's like what happened. I feel like a lot of these NFTs are just like pretty much like a new version of those shit coins that that's were exactly around, right? Yeah. I think the best move though for anyone People are was... just ready to throw a thousand dollars at anything. And everything's gonna go anything Bitcoin because it's fucking Bitcoin is gonna keep doing its thing. And guess what? There'll be 10, 5, 9 NFT projects that will be here in 2037. Friends is going to be one of them. I'm going to yeah. clip the shit out of this right now. What I just said in 2037, <laughs> Bob's going to look terrible. And in 2037, <laughs> I'm going to clip this shit and it's going to be there and it's going to be a fucking monster and little kids in fucking, fucking Brazil are going to be wearing fucking patient panda fucking backpacks because I'm going to spend the next 15 years making every fucking person on earth give a fuck about my characters because I got that in me. But a lot, a lot of people won't do that. Do you reach out at all, any time your shit that you're pumping with your NFT stuff to any influencers to get them to pump it? Of course not. No. He doesn't need I don't need it. it. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. No. Again, guys. As a matter of fact, I did the reverse. This fucking Bob's shit. trying to Sorry. get a brand deal right now? <laughs> I was going to say, Gary. <laughs> 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 so, yo, for I, 10 grand, I, I got I, your next I, one. <laughs> I did something very weird, Bob. I didn't because I wanted the people that fucked with me the most to win the most. Yeah. I so knew that I was going to win that the people... I launched in May. Which is like a trillion years ago. What did you, how many did you launch? Like 10,255. Did you sell them all at once or in phases? One shot. But One shot. unlike most projects where you don't know what you get and it's like opening a pack, you knew which character you were buying with me. And what did they initially go for? 2,000? So I did a Dutch auction because I didn't want gas wars and people pounding it. So they went for all different prices. They were from 3 ETH to 0.5 ETH. And at the time, ETH was about 4,000 bucks. So more than 50% went for 2,000 a piece. At the height, some went for 10000 on day one. Wow. But for example, somebody sold an ape from my world yesterday for $200,000 that they paid 8000 for. Right? So like, but I knew that I wanted my audience to make, because I was so confident, instead of my rich friends or my influencer friends, I was like, you know what? I'm going to put it out there. I was definitely not under the radar. I was everywhere. I was like, I'm doing it. But I didn't call anybody and say, you have to. Because it was hard because it was mine. It's like, yo, and especially in May, it was like, 
And Herm's here. He fucked up. I was with him on day launch. Herm I'm gave like, me his draft He sweater, fucked up way. so bad. Herm gave me his draft Herm fucked sweater. up so, he could have made millions, but instead he's got a good beard. And yeah. so, what, <laughs> so it was hard for me to say buy this because in May, you think NFTs are fucking crazy to people now in January? May of last year oh was God, like fucking. Yeah. I thought it was the stupidest thing ever. And now you're like, wait a minute, they're, they're, exactly. I'm oh. starting, well, I think what really throws people off is they just think it's a photo Correct. of a fucking, like I said, like an animal that looks Correct. like it's on Molly. But when you realize that Connection. it's a Guilty. digital token that's going to give you access to shit, and as the world just goes more and more digital, you how don't do, know what that do, access do, is going to lead to. How do people not know that, that they have a child or a sibling or a niece or a nephew or a cousin that is spending unlimited money on Fortnite and Roblox and Minecraft and NBA 2K and Madden points on digital flex, digital access. Farmville was a 10 years ago doing hundreds of millions. Mm -hmm. SimCity. Crazy. You know how many upgrade video? Like, I I watch people literally shit talk on NFT. I'm, I'm weird. I do my homework when I'm trying to get Bob to do. I see somebody get say, this it. is a fucking scam. Then I click it and I look at everything they've said ever. And sure enough, I can go back nine months and see that they paid a hundred bucks for power-ups of their little mobile game. The fuck did you do that for? Why'd you pay a hundred dollars for mid for something digital? But that's giving you a utility. So I think all these other Correct. projects are confusing people because it's like it's just a picture of a cougar. Correct. Like, what am I getting? Correct. Meanwhile, people don't say that about spending six hundred thousand dollars on a Michael Jordan rookie card, yeah. even though in nineteen forty-five nobody thought cards were worth anything. Comic books sell for millions of dollars when they're Spider-Man or Superman or Batman number one, but everybody thought it was stupid to pay $500 for them in 1965 when they were originally 10 cents. People always shit on things that are collectibles, VHS tapes. Mm -hmm. Who would have ever thought? Mm -hmm. People aren't good at history. If you look at history, it will tell you the future. That's what this shit is. What's your opinion on like, everyone's talking about it now, is kind of different as like, the metaverse. I think it's too early. Yeah. I don't think enough people live in VR 24 seven to make it pop off the way people think it's going to, which is why I haven't bought land or gone in yet. It will come, but I'm very big on timing. In 17, in 2016 I bought Ethereum because I understood that it was a platform, not a currency, I liked it. In 2017 I looked at CryptoKitties for five minutes and I was like, this is too early. I don't see normals collecting this. In December of 2020 I looked at CryptoPunks and I looked at Top Shot and I'm like, oh shit, the normals are coming. And that's when I went in and did my 100 hours of homework in January and February and just shut down January and February. This time last year, I was shut down. 15 hours of reading, right. listening, listening and watching. I don't think we're there on the metaverse. I don't think everybody here is like, can't wait to get home and put on my VR set and yeah. fucking chill. But I don't think it's as far. I don't, I don't know the timing. Away. I never guess timing. I just move fast when it happens. Because mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I, I know one question with the like a utility of an NFT could be like, it's... Are we good? No. Do I have to go? Uh, oh. No, That's we, what I'm talking about. When, when do you. I need to leave? We'll wrap it up. Cool. We'll wrap it up. Sorry. Sorry. We're good. We'll when were we supposed playing? to be there? Mix? What's my calendar say? Yeah. I we'll wrap it up. Here. We're good. We, we usually do an hour. I'm yeah. fucking enjoying the shit yeah, out of this. I'm I know. Just like, it's casual. No, no, we're good. You well, got somewhere to be? There's also a few things I want to... Rapid fire? Yeah. You want to do a five minute? What does my calendar say? Leave at 7.15? 7. What time is right now? 7.28. Really? Yes. Gary, see how... Or either the two of you going to do for them something? <laughs> <laughs> All right, so here's the deal. Wrap it up or... No, yes, no. please. All right, perfect. So here's the deal. John, you want to wrap it up or Kyle? No, I, want, I want to know more about Fly Fish Club. <laughs> we, tomorrow of the filming, you guys are going to air this after, so this happened last week. I'm launching with, with three partners, Connor, Roddy, and Josh Capon, a very epic chef. We're launching a token that is your access to a private restaurant club. Think Soho House, think Zero Bond, think country clubs where you pay your dues to buy in mm -hmm. and you buy the token and that gets you into, but it's your asset. Unlike Rayos where you buy the table, you can't resell it. With, with Fly Fish Club, you buy the token, you can come, we're gonna open New York and obviously expand Vegas, LA, Miami's our ambition, Europe, London, Paris over the next decade, but this is your token. But wow. we can add value to it. Virtual events, pop-ups at the Masters, pop-ups at the Super Bowl, pop-up. It is the whole game. So I'm leaning into utility while everyone's so doing pictures. it's a pictures. physical location It's here? a physical location. When does it open? Uh, late this year, 
maybe Q1 2020. Crazy. And three. can you only get in if you have the token? You can only get in if you have the token. Wow. That's the so future of token is an idiot. So tomorrow, do you have an Ethereum wallet? Yes. Good. You buy one tomorrow. Buy one tomorrow. Got yeah. it. Oh, here comes the text. Transfer here it comes. Me Johnny, give 1 a.m. I'll get up to go pee, and I'll look at my phone real quick. Hey, that's Got a, in that's the Ethereum. A reason. That's a different reason. Um, <laughs> Gary, what are some of your favorite NFTs that are outside of the V world? Um, I love World of Women. Mm-hmm. I think it's the biggest myth of everyone. It's a. It's the first significant, epic, dominant, female-only project. Like, female-only. You And I think long-term like seven years from now, 15 years from now, when the world's in, they're gonna be like, oh shit, just like CryptoPunks or Bored Ape or V Friends, this is the blue chip of the early days of female. And so I see all the powerhouse female executives that I know in the business world and just the fucking, all those female ninjas, they're gonna gravitate to World of Women. I think World of Women is massively underpriced, Mm. long, long term. And again, everybody watching, 90% of you that are in the game, you're trying to flip in an hour. Like don't use this clip to like try to buy it for three Ethereum and sell for four. I'm like, this is long, yeah. 15 years, three years, nine years. So World of Women I think is really interesting. Subducks. Okay, Frankie's yeah, a right, real yeah, guy. Really. He's been in the game for four years. You'd love him. He's like one of you guys. Like he's fucking yeah. cool as fuck. Real designer. Re- he's in it for his life. Uh, I think he's got a really good project that's slightly underrated. Okay. Um, you know, AJ, my brother, who's fucking, you know, yeah, you know like course. really fucking smart. Like the like I've got a little Vayner bit more sports. of the intuition, but he's got more of like the black and white like ninja. He's been on doodles for a while. Love doodles. And so now that's very dangerously close to becoming maybe the next, could that be the one that actually becomes the next board ape? Because it's getting yeah. hot right at this second. So that's, that's expensive. Um, he and I he and I just bought some doodles. We bought some doodles, alien friends and in-betweeners in the last week. Invisible friend, you know, there's, it's got a lot of hype. I, I, I really like, I really, really like X copy for the very wealthy you're watching long term. That feels safe to me. Um, trying to think of something inexpensive. Look real quick. I know we have to go. Let me look at one little inexpensive thing to make sure I find something that brings value to the masses. Give me one second. Just looking at literally right now, the like the top selling projects. Creature World. I think Danny Cole Oof. is one of the coolest fuckers. Yeah, he's a real artist. Like he's like you know when it's funny when I met Danny Cole. I'm like oh this is kind of like the kids that. Like when I met you and your bro, mm-hmm. you guys left. This is like a trillion years ago. Yeah, one of my yeah, shitty offices. Yeah. You guys left. That was, that was a beautiful office. You're not Thank there anymore? You. No, we're way different. Wow. We, you guys left, and I turned to the team. I said, those guys are going to win. Well, thank you. Right? And so um, I guess Danny Cole, to my that point, is that kind of guy. Cool. So those are some of the ones that stand at King Frogs, which is a derivative from Subducks. I am so happy for the most creative people in the world because the NFT blockchain infrastructure is going to unleash levels of creativity it. that we've never been able to see. I can't wait for Bob to call us with his idea. I, listen, no more. I'm, I'm silent but deadly. I you know you are. are. That's You're why I can't Bob. wait. I can't wait silent for the Bob. calls. Gary, no more. The fucking man. I gotta I go. I love you, so you guys. Right. Take care. All right. I love you, love you. Thanks, Gary.